Welcome back. Thanks for getting on. Today we're joined by Brandon Tyler Russell. Uh, how about you introduce yourself? Uh, well, like he said, my name is Brandon Tyler Russell, and I am an actor, or try to be. <laughs> well, with 30 credits to your name, I don't think it's trying to be. That's fair enough. That's fair enough. So, how, how long have you been acting? Uh, in January will mark 22 years. So, pretty so, much almost five. You know, you're trying, but you've been doing it for uh, a long, long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to, well, trying to keep it going, I guess I should say. I'm trying to obviously do some more work, and I'm trying to get into behind the camera work as well. Yeah. So I that's want to fair. try and do writing, directing, stuff like that. Yeah. That's a fun process too. So yeah, what what got you into acting? Um I used to watch a lot of movies when I was younger and uh primarily, you know, I watched like Star Wars um that was my favorite at the time. And every time when I watched Empire Strikes Back and uh, Luke was fighting Darth Vader, I always wanted to, I always asked my mom how to get inside the TV so I could help Luke fight Darth Vader. And I asked her that Man. for probably a year straight. And then finally she's like, all right, well, he seems like he wants to get into this. So let's try it. And then ever since then, it just kind of, took off and the rest is history yeah that's probably the most wholesome thing we've ever heard in the show for why someone got into acting uh is... yeah i mean it's yeah that that's just you know that's my story you know me so wholesome yeah <laughs> what do you so, think of the uh the sequels bro do you like them oh yeah the sequels you enjoy the sequels yeah. hmm? did you enjoy the sequels uh, I enjoy. I mean, I enjoyed all of them. I mean, Star Wars is Star Wars, even if they're terrible. <laughs> there you go. I, I still Wait. enjoy it, you know. Yeah. You know, Which one like, was your favorite? Bad, I'm like, yeah, but it's Star Wars, so like it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which Star Wars movie was your favorite? Empire Strikes Back. Okay. Sure, is my favorite Star Wars movie, and then of the prequels, my favorite is Revenge of the Sith. And then for the sequels, I would say my favorite was. Oh, <laughs> I guess it's Force Awakens. Yeah, good choice. Good choice. Yeah. Great choice. Great <laughs> choice. Yeah, I mean the other two we won't really. Yeah. What other two? That middle one. Have, have they have they released more films? Jesus, good they, on them. Oh, wait, they, they had more after Force Awakens. I don't. I, I thought don't it went Force Awakens and then The Mandalorian, but ah, sure. What do I know? <laughs> yeah right who knows that yeah. sounds about right <laughs> yeah um yeah we've actually talked to some people from star wars movies before and it just sounds no sounds like it's an awesome experience i would imagine so um mm. i have a friend of mine that i did a web series with god or maybe five years ago, and she's uh, she plays Rose in the sequels of Star Wars. Oh wow! Whoa! Yeah, so uh, I it, it's kind of cool seeing like people you know that all start out on the same level, and then you know they take off, and I'm like, hey, good for you! I'm still back here, but all right, <laughs> you know, I'm not in Star Wars yet, but yes. Uh, you know, I've, I I have a lot of friends that, that are like that, you know, that we've been in the industry for a while. And some of us, you know, are at, I guess you could say the level that I'm at where, you know, we have a decent amount of credits, but we're still trying to build off that. Some of yeah. us that have class, some of us that just up and quit. And then I have several other friends who have just gone on to, to do, you know, great things. Obviously, my friend who was a Star Wars um my buddy Dylan Manette stars in uh, 13 Reasons Why. I mean, it's, you know, you, you wow. when you're in this industry, you kind of, you grow with these people and you get to see them kind of yeah. take yeah. their career, which, is, you know, is really good. Um, I don't want to say it's bittersweet because, it, you know, it's not, but at the same time, you're like, good for you, man. And then you're like, 
damn, like, when is this going to happen to me? You know? Yeah. But, uh, mm. It, you know, it still makes the experience fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> um, that's one thing you kind of forget, you know, everyone starts in a certain level. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. So. there's people who were in Willem Dafoe's acting class and they did one job and quit. So, yeah, exactly. And, and now look at his career. Yeah. Mm. Kind of depends how much you're willing to do and what you're willing to do. <laughs> mm. Yeah, pretty much. That's that's Hollywood for you. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah, Hollywood's a bit of a, a class act in all fairness. And speaking nah. of a class act, I was just saying before we started, there's this, this, this episode you did on Grey's Anatomy as yeah. a guest star. And uh, it is probably the best guest star appearance I've ever seen. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, it I'm, was. I'm dead serious. It was a lot of. Do you do you like religiously watch the show? Uh I used to. You used um, to. But that's fair. It's, it's kind of. You know, COVID off. makes TV just nothing. Yeah, that's true. That's like I, I haven't sat in front of a TV in a while. Mm. I mean that that's good. I mean I sit I try and sit in front of a TV every day. Um Yeah. Really Checking out the competition. Mind. Yeah, I respect yeah. that. Respect that. Kind of taking yeah, a list yeah. like, you know, oh, I could do that better. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you ever have an experience like that where you've seen another actor do something and said like I could have done that role better? Oh, a hundred percent, yeah. A hundred percent. And more often than not, it's uh it's usually for projects that I myself go out for. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's a TV show and I know what it is, um, then I'll kind of, you know, when it airs, if I have time and I know that it's airing, I'll be like, yeah, I'll tune it in. Or sometimes I'll just be, you know, channel surfing and be like, oh, I haven't seen this in a while. And I click it and coincidentally, it's the episode that I auditioned for. I'm like, oh, like, I wonder what direction they went. And then, you know, I see the guy and he's like, he's sometimes he's a different ethnicity. Sometimes he's really tall and muscular. Sometimes he's really tall and skinny or, sh you know, short and heavy. And it's like, I'm like, okay, it's usually something looks wise as different. And other times it's like people that kind of have the same, you know, look and features that I do. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I watch them and I'm just like, I could have done that so much better, <laughs> you yeah. know, not to like toot my own horn, but toot toot. I mean, it's, uh, you got to believe in yourself. Like, you know, you got to have that certain amount of, yeah. I'm great at this exactly. kind of thing, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's a really, it's a dog eat dog business, you know? So yeah. it's, you know, yeah. I, I don't want to do it in like a condescending, like egomaniacal way. You know what I mean? It's not like right. you don't want, to give you an ego but you have to have confidence in yourself because if you don't then you know when you go in to do these auditions or you show up on set then it you know it, it kind of gets uh it, it shows you know it shows people can tell that you're not really confident in what you're doing you know a lot of people don't think that that really plays a pivotal role in people's performances because they a lot of people think that actors can kind of turn that on and off and some of them can but a lot of them can't so then when they're um you know doing their scenes and off confidence in themselves it's uh you know it's it's kind of off putting i guess you could say yeah um so we've had a few people on before uh, like actors and we normally ask this question at some point of roles they went for and they didn't get or like the biggest one they went for and didn't get We've had some insane ones. We had like Negan from uh, Walking Dead. Oh man, uh, yeah. I, I mean, that that's a real. What's your story? <laughs> uh, well, for starters, that that is that is really really cool because, uh, I mean, I I I don't I don't watch The Walking Dead anymore. I used to, and then yeah, I think once it hit like the six, maybe seven season, I was like, this is literally the same shit like i think uh, i think i uh, i think i know most people stopped watching around the time negan came into it yeah. except like, yeah uh, we killed that person because, like, or two people the, and everyone gave up yeah i mean he's the he's literally from what i heard like he's carrying the show on his back is mm -hmm. i mean he's a really cool character in general 
Um, and I, I just, I'm, I'm also biased though. Cause I like am a huge Jeffrey Dean Morgan fan. So like <laughs> when I see him in it, I'm like, no, there's like nobody else that can do that. Um, but my thing, oh God. Um, my thing was yay close for Peter Parker, Spider-Man. Oh my gosh. And yay close. And got beat out by obviously by Tom Holland and Oh, I've Stone. never hated Tom as much. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I'm so salty. I like to this day, I am still salty about it. I'm like, man, that it's like that was mine for the taking, man. Damn. It would have been that would just, game just, change. Just when I say that with everyone we've asked this question, you won. Well done. But um Man, you won. You took the tea right there. God. Man, I feel terrible. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 terrible it, for asking now. No, 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 no. It's okay. It, it was actually funny because before you asked that, that was something that I was gonna mention when I was talking about, you know, um, the confidence thing and people doing, um, excuse me, um, you know, seeing friends and stuff um, yeah. progress into, you know, um, I guess into stardom, and. Uh, yeah, I was like, damn, that close, that that would have been a game changer, you know? That would have completely changed my career, my yeah. life. I, I, mean, I think about that today, you know? I'm like, dang, like, if I really had gotten that, like, where would I be right now? And I just, you know, it, it would be so much different. Yeah. But, um, but I it, mean, that was back when they were trying to cast him for Captain America's Civil War. Yes. His, you know, brief little cameo in that. And that that was um, that wasn't the scene that we had to do for the audition because it, the the project at the time was super under wraps. They did they like when you audition for things, they typically tell you like, okay, this is the project, this is the writer, director, producer, casting director, this is you know the scene, this is the role. They usually give you all that information for this. They're like, this is the casting director this is the scene not even they didn't even break down the character and what they wanted him to be like they said this is the scene well they kind of they gave a little brief description and then they were like they they called it untitled something project i don't even remember what it was it was a few years back and uh you know i i'm a huge i'm a huge nerd for that stuff i love comic yeah. books i love star wars i love all that stuff so then when i started you know, reading these scenes, I was like, oh my God, I know exactly what this is. I was like, I know exactly what this is. Um, but it, um, it was, it was a scenario because I knew that they were auditioning for the new Spider-Man film. I knew it, but at the time, everybody under the sun in, in Hollywood was going out for it. Everybody that fit my age demographic not even looks age demographic of all ethnicities the diversity yeah. was insane they i think they had like like around i think it was around the world they had like fifty thousand people audition for it and they had yeah. to like cycle through all of those and uh, i remember i kept trying to get my agent to get me an audition for spider-man I called them up every day. I was like, guys, you got to get me this. You got to get me this. You got to get me this. And they're like, we're trying, we're trying, we're trying. And then finally I was like, you know what? Screw you guys. I'm going to take it and I'll take matters into my own hands. So I took my headshot. I drove like an hour out to the casting office. I brought it in and, and just set it down in their like little thing. I was like, hey, my name is Brandon. Just wanted to drop this off. That's it. Thank you. And I left. Two days later, my agent calls me and like, hey, you're not going to believe this. Uh, you know, you got an audition for Spider-Man. And I'm like, you don't say. Like, that's so interesting. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. And uh, and then when they sent me over the, the sides, I was surprised because I didn't really think at, at the time that it was Spider-Man because it didn't really give us a lot of meat to it, I guess. And then when I read it, that's when I was like, oh, oh yeah, oh, yeah, this is, yeah, this is definitely Spider-Man. So I had to go out of my way and uh, get coaching from uh, actually at that time was James Franco because I was taking his acting classes at the time. Oh, wow. Whoa. Yeah. And of course, since he was in uh, the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man, yeah. so this, seems, this seems fitting, you know, this seems 
suitable. So did that and got quite a few callbacks for it and uh, came down to me and eight other people for it. And then Tom Holland just came in and literally flipped into the scene. Like he did like a side flip and we were like, well, all right, guys, let's wrap it up and go home. <laughs> that sucks. Cause I mean, I, I didn't know how to, you know, obviously I didn't know how to really do these parkour stunts yeah. and, and he came in not only having that skill set, but also uh, he worked on into the heart of the sea with Chris Hemsworth, who's obviously Thor. So when he found out they were doing uh, Spider-Man, he's like, oh, hey, I give this kid high praise. And I mean, so that's, it's kind of hard to, you know, outweigh Chris Hemsworth opinion, I guess, yeah, in a yeah. situation like that. So, which kind of was like, it was like, oh man, that was, uh, yeah, that was a low blow. That one was something I was upset about for a while, you know, but I try not to uh, let the nose in this business put mm -hmm. me down because I mean, you're going to get a lot of nose. And I tell people yeah. that all the time when people are like, Oh, can you give me advice to get into acting? And I was like, Don't take yeah, like I can give you some pieces of advice, but my biggest like advice if, and when you get into it is that you have to be okay with rejection because you're going to get a million no's before you get a yes. And it's like, that was a situation with Spider-Man. I was like, damn, why did that have to be my no? Like, why couldn't that have been my yes? But um, I try not to dwell on that because then it's like, you know, if you have two or three auditions and, you know, you really want two of them. I mean, ideally you want all of them, but there's two of them that are, you're just like, yes, like I, I want this so bad. And you put your all into one of them and then you get the call saying that, you didn't get it and then you know you you get upset and it's like if you dwell on that then you're not going to do as good on the next audition as you could have because it's going to be on the back of your mind like you know you're going to be sitting there doing your scene in the back of your head you're like damn like i was so close like why like oh that's such a bummer and then that kind of i guess gives you that chip on your shoulder that yeah. casting directors and people like that can see so then it you know it it, inev it inevitably really dominoes <clears throat> its way and kind of knocks down a lot of other opportunities for you if you dwell on it but i always tell people to try try and not to that's always the number one piece of advice yeah uh just what you said about he came in doing like the side flip you know i i have very limited experience in uh acting you know in that world but there i can relate to the being outdone by stunts uh you know it's a, it's a rough thing. Like it, after that happened, like there's probably nothing anyone could have done acting wise no, that, that would have got that, them in. No, at that point, no. And you know, it was funny because uh, we, you know, we all got to sit there and watch each other. And what, and you know, what I liked about it was that normally in a situation like that, you know, when you, when you audition that many people and you narrow it down, to that like because i mean going from fifty thousand to eight or nine is like obviously it wasn't that it was a steady progressing like a you know it, it was yeah. a steady downgrade from fifty thousand to ten thousand to you know one thousand to five hundred and then it <laughs> just whittled its way down to eight eight or nine and um you know we all in a situation like that when you've come that far and then you get to that point, it's like, normally you would expect, I guess some people would expect that, you know, the other people are sitting there like watching you and they're gonna be like, dude, this guy's ass. Like I have this in the bag or, you know, oh yeah, no, no, no. Like, oh dude, that was a terrible choice. Mine's gonna be better, you know? But what was really cool is, you know, everybody would get up and do their individual, you know, I guess, I don't wanna say like, uh, their individual take on the character because I mean the character of Spider-Man and Peter Parker is pretty straightforward it's pretty mm -hmm. linear for the most part you know the storyline and all that but um, you know just the choices that they made for, for the scenes and you know what was cool is when we'd come off all the other guys would be like dude that was sick like hey man that was really really good and be like damn you know I didn't think about doing that that was a good choice and, you know we kind of all lifted each other up and we we're all like hey man good luck and I mean, sometimes in this business, people are like, hey, good luck, which really means, hey, 
you suck. Like, I hope you do terrible. I want this. But that wasn't the case because I could tell everybody was kind of, you know, authentic with it. And, uh, and then finally, um, Holland was the last one to come in. And he came in a little, I don't want to say late, but a little like after the fact. We, all of us had already gone. All of the big wigs were talking. And then they're like, oh, we have one more. And we were like, counting them we're like no like that that's everybody and then we, we you know we see him come in and we're like oh okay cool like one more dude and then you know he he was kind of asking um he was asking the writers and you know casting people and stuff he was asking them something like like quietly we couldn't we couldn't hear what he said and they were like yeah that sounds great and we were like okay and then we watched and the next thing we know he just runs and like side flips in and we're like damn like oh dude like and we just all kind of looked at each other and you know this one guy was like i'm just gonna i'm just gonna go and he literally just got his crap and he just walked out and i was like oh and then you know he did the rest of the scene and we were just like all right <laughs> like that's cool. yeah and you yeah. know and i don't know how to react to that i i recognized him from in the heart of the sea and was like, oh, yeah, I, I remember him. And then I was like, wait, who was in that movie? I was like, Killian Murphy was in that. And then I was like, wait, Chris. H I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, game, set, Matt. You know, it was, it was game over at that point. But, uh, you know, it was still a cool, fun experience. But, yeah, to this day, like, every time I, I watch any of the movies, any of the Spider-Man movies that have him in it, I'm like, you know, I'm like, yeah. Oh. I mean, he's great. You know, I'd actually love to see you as a Spider-Man villain now. And then, no, oh, I would the take that. there now. They, yeah, it's there now. They're like you. So in this scene, you really have to hate Peter Parker. I'm like, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, geez. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I do. Dude, don't, worry, don't even worry about that. <laughs> but no, I mean, yeah. he's, uh, you know, he's a great, he's he's a great actor, and I think he's a, uh, you know, he's a solid choice for that. But. uh I'll be honest, outside of, um, I mean, I, I'm a huge Spider-Man fan in general. That's like, that's my favorite, one of my favorite Marvel heroes. So that's why I was so adamant on getting that audition in the first place. Because um, I'm like, you know, when do those opportunities come around? How often as an actor, do they pull it around and say, hey, this is the role of Spider-Man. Anybody want it? You know, that, that, that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. So it's like, that's when I was like, oh, yes, I would love that. And, uh, you know, so obviously being a huge fan, I had to go watch the movies. And of course it was kind of a situation, you know, like you said earlier, you know, watching it been like, I could have done so much more to that, yeah. but uh, you know what? I'm, I'm not going to be petty about it, but other than those Marvel, uh, other than the Marvel and the Spider-Man movies that he he's done, I can't get myself to watch any of his other work for that specific reason. And I mean, that, that's, you know, that sucks because it's like, I feel like I'm being super petty about it, which actually, no, I, I am being petty about it. But yeah, it, it's just something that I can't, I, I can't get myself to do. And then, you know, I've heard he's done a lot of really great, uh, really great projects, but um, I just haven't gotten myself around to it yet. I will, I'm sure I will one day, but as of right now, yeah, I'm still salty about it. Look, I'll be honest, of all the reactions we've had to that question, uh, yours is the most justified. <laughs> yeah, I, I. It's like I could have been Spider Man. I, I could have, and that—that's all there is to it. And you know, there is a lot, a lot of uh, people, a lot of my friends that I tell that to, and they still to this day give me shit about it because they think it's funny. You know, they're like, what? One of my buddies, Shane, he actually lives right down the street from me. I told him that, and then uh, we were working together at Universal Studios um, on the back lot last year. And we were there, you know, Thursday through Sunday for, God, from September to November. And, um, you know, we, we were there four nights a week. And every after I told him that, every single night he had to make some sort of quip or, like, snarky comment about Spider-Man. Because he just thought it was funny. Like, like we, would, we would be out there doing our thing, and then he'd come up behind me and be like, Hey man, are you gonna go whip into action? I'd be like, dude, you suck! Like, <laughs> I know, like he would just do stuff like that. I was like, ah. Uh. And then we used to carpool there, so the whole 
way home. He'd be oh. like, and he would always do something like that. Like we would listen to music and he'd be like, oh, you want to see my dance move for this? I'm like, that's not even a dance move. I'm like, you suck, man. <laughs> and he, yeah, he hung that over my head for a good month and a half. And I was like, or, or sometimes he'll text me and be like, hey, like I'm having a movie now. You want to come over? I'm like, what are we watching? He's like, I don't know, something with Tom Holland. I'm like, pass. <laughs> you sly. <laughs> you <Yeah>. sly man, <laughs> you. <laughs> okay, that's rough. That's rough. But that's yeah. rough. Right? No. <laughs> that's something, something Thomas would do. Um, but yeah, no, that, that is, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm right so right sorry I heard that. <laughs> no, I'm so it, sorry it, I asked. It, you learned it. You learned to deal with it, you know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot. I mean, a lot of people that I tell that story to, you know, when I tell them, oh yeah, it was for Peter Parker, Spider Man. They they usually this is usually the reaction they go. Yeah, I can see it, and I was like, yeah, that, I know. That's, Trust that's me, I know. I've been. I mean, I've been getting told that since I was probably. 14 years old when I finally got rid of the, you know, the, like the old style Justin Bieber haircut and the, you know, kind of, I've, the seen, it. I've seen it. Eye. As soon as I kind of changed that up, you know, people are like, Oh, you could play a young Spider-Man or a young Peter Parker. And I was like, yeah, Thank you. Cause I've been reading, I've been reading those comics since I was like six years old. I love Spider-Man. And now it's, um, love hate. Yeah, it's it's a love hate. Yeah, it's bittersweet. You know, it's like, oh, I love you, Spider Man, but damn, but not so the actor. Fun. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> so close. You... But yeah, now I'm starting to research. I'm like, Spider Man villains that could be in future movies. Enter like. <laughs> Pretty sure you know, is it Kevin the Hunter or something or Craven the Hunter that's coming up in the next one? Yeah, I know Craven the Hunter's coming up. I know Mor- uh, Morbius. You know they already have. Jake Gyllenhaal's Mysterio, which that's another reason why I'm super upset about it because my favorite actress, Jake Gyllenhaal, I'm a oh, huge fan. Yeah. So then when, you know, when they announced the second Spider-Man movie, I was like, hmm, of course. Like, of course there's going to be another one. And like, you know, it's going to star Mysterio. And I was like, dude, heck yeah, Mysterio's a badass villain. And then they go, who's being played by Jake Gyllenhaal? I was like, Damn it all! Table flip. I was like, this, this sucks. And now no, this must suck. Every time there's like an announcement about Spider-Man, a table gets flipped. It, it gets flipped over, yeah. And uh, and you know, I ended up not going to see um, I to the sequel of Far From Home. I I never got to see it. It just for the, I again, that was something that I was like, that's a hard pill to swallow. I don't. I was like, Ugh, I can't. I can't do it yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I've seen all the other ones. You know, Civil War. I saw um, Homecoming, Infinity War, Endgame. I saw all of those, and um, you know, they were uh, you know they're 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 great movies. You know, they're very very entertaining. Um, but like I said, I just still think about how different my life would be had I gotten that. You know, but yeah. it's again, it's kind of bittersweet. You know, it it would have been something that. If, drastically changed my career you know um i could have easily you know given i mean i could have given everybody in my family like probably their dream home or their dream car or something you know like giving back to my family for all that they've done for me yeah. that was i, mean, I don't want to say that was my main reason i was disappointed because obviously i was like dude it's spider-man like i said those opportunities don't come around but you know then kind of taking it in i'm like yeah i could have done that you know i could have helped my friends i could have done so many different things but you know the the sweet part to it is like it helps me grow as an actor getting that experience you know i wouldn't have met you know my girlfriend i wouldn't have realized that i wanted to get further into writing and directing because i probably would have been so consumed by that and just the press outlets and like all the things that come along with playing that role you know it's uh you know i wouldn't have gotten to you know be there for one of my best friends engagements and my other friend's wedding you know it's like there's a lot of things that i know i would have missed out on and in some respect i'm very happy and thankful that i got to experience those things but But i'm just wondering like you're worried about missing out on these things like but again you're, you're really young yeah that's true i mean there you know there's a lot of that 
that comes that that comes you know in and out of life so i mean realistically i mean i was still i was still friends with um you know my buddy who just got married and uh, my other friend who got engaged i was friends with them around that time anyway so like i guess if i you know if i did get it I still would have gone to the engagement party. I still would have gone to the wedding, but then people would have been like, like, hold, like, yeah, yo, like, why is, why is Spider Man at your wedding? He's like, oh, yes, yeah, like, that's my homie. They'd be like, what the hell? Like, you know, yeah. I've always thought, like, that would have been kind of a, a cool feeling. I mean, I think that's, I don't know, that's some people don't, some actors and actresses, you know, they don't like the fame that comes along with it i'm the type that like i would i would love that not to like in like an ego way not to like stroke my ego but i think it would be really cool to yeah. you know be walking down the street or in the grocery store and someone's like hey i love your work can i get a picture i'd be like dude yeah of course that happened to me one time uh in my hometown of gurney i'm repping the sweatshirt right here back in uh illinois um i used to um, when I moved out to California, I used to go back and forth from here to Illinois to visit my family. But then my whole family ended up uprooting and moving out here. But when I was going back and forth, um, I, I want to say I was probably around 17 years old and I moved and I went back home during Christmas time. We have a huge mall there called Gurney Mills. It's a massive mall. And, uh, that you know that was the local hangout you know of course and uh so you know i i went to meet up with um one of my uh my exes at the time weirdly enough you know she was like oh yeah, hmm. yeah. Hmm. Hmm. i'm like i was like come back out here hmm. now you want to hang out with me hmm. no um but uh, you know i i met up with her at the mall and while i hope she's listening know, um, yeah, right. Hopefully. Um, I, uh, you know, while we were at the mall, we were, you know, we were eating lunch and this mom walked by with like her daughter, her daughter was probably like five, six years old. And, uh, and, you know, her and her mom stopped and like, there were so many people in the mall that I didn't really pay attention to it. You know, I was just like, okay, there's just other people in the mall. And then like her and her daughter were like whispering to each other. And like the little girl like looked super shy. And then, you know, I kind of like looked over and was like, are they looking at us? Or like, you know, what's the deal? Cause when people stare too long, I'm like, is there a problem? Like what, why are you staring at me for more than 30 seconds? Like what's, what's going on? And then the mom came over and was like, I'm so sorry to ask, but she was like, did you, did you use, like, did you do a movie um, called Smitty like are you an actor and I was like oh I was like uh yeah and, she, and uh, apparently when I filmed um this movie Smitty I filmed it when I was 12 years old filmed it out in the rural lovely state of Iowa which if you don't know is basically corn it's all it's just corn and then there's a city in the middle <laughs> that's basically what it is it's you know super you know, there, there's not a lot of stuff there. So we filmed it there. And when I filmed it, they wrote um, an article about me in the Gurney newspaper. And it's, it's, it's not a large town, but it's by no means a small town. You know, it had probably 40,000 people that lived in the, in the greater Gurney area. And uh, I guess a lot of people there read newspapers and she was like, yes, like, I remember reading this, you know, this article. And it, it had come out like two, three years prior when the actual film released. Because I filmed it in 2008 um, at 12. And then it, the movie came out four years later in 2012, which is like super unheard of. And when it came out, I was, I was about 16 years old, almost 17 and that's when they wrote uh, the article and it had um and then i i believe i had actually i had been out 
um, that year. It was uh, in 2012 when the movie came out. I went back home December of that year, and the paper had released like maybe a month prior to that. Um, so it, it was interesting. But anyways, you know, she was like, she's like, um, so you're an actor? And I was like, yeah. And she's like, you did the movie Smitty. I was like, yeah. And that, that's how I found out that they wrote an article. I didn't even know that they had written an article about me. Like, nobody had told me that. And she was like, yeah, like, you were in the newspaper here. And I was like, I was? And they were like, yeah. And then she was like, my daughter absolutely loves that movie. Like, can she get a picture with you? And I was like, you know Let's what? Go. Man, got you know, got up, took a picture with the little girl. And she was just like, she looks like she was a hysterical mess. And I was like. And I, and I didn't understand it at the time. I'm like, you know, why is she crying over meeting me? And then I realized, oh, that's right. We're a small town in Illinois. Like, you never really see movies, like any, any type of, you know, TV or film actor who's like done something to that extent that, that just goes to visit Gurney Mills just for the hell of it. You know, like, that's not, that's not something that you see there. So like for them, it was like a huge moment. And of course, like, as I walked throughout the mall, you know, um, with my ex, like, I saw tons of people that, you know, would walk by. And, and I don't know if some of them were looking, but some of them were obviously looking and some of them may it seemed like they did. But again, you know, there's so much commotion in the mall, you know, you don't really know. But I was like, yeah. that was my only time where I've ever remotely felt to that extent where people, you know, are recognizing you know me i've had a few people here and there that um recognize me from Grey's anatomy my favorite story from that is when i worked at this restaurant right up the right up um the way from my house and one of my co-workers it was so funny this happened last year um <laughs> my co-worker i was waiting to clock in to work and she came in she was probably 10 minutes early i was like five minutes early she came in you know she had her phone like this and she was on she was watching netflix and uh you know she was watching it and i was like i was like oh like just making conversation i was like oh hey well, you know what are you watching she's like oh i'm watching Grey's anatomy and i was like <laughs> i didn't say anything because i was like you know i don't like People are like, oh, Grey's Anatomy. Like, well, you should watch my episode. You know, like getting aggressive about it. But I was like, I was like, oh, that's awesome. Like, you you like the show? And she's like, I love it. Like, I'm binge watching it. I'm absolutely hooked. And I, out of curiosity, was like, oh, like what season are you on? She's like, season fourteen. Well, that was the season I was on. And I was like, oh, no way. I was like, what episode are you on? She was like, uh, I'm just about to start seven. As you can tell, that was. That was the episode that I was in. And Get I was out of like, here. No. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh. I was like, interesting. I was like, and she's like, do you watch the show? I was like, yeah, something like that. I was like, yeah. Um, it, you know, I was like, it's a, that's a really good episode. She's like, it is. And I was like, yeah, my opinion's a little biased, but yeah. I said, it's, it, it's a good episode. And she's like, why is it biased? And I, you know, I checked my watch. I was like, Hey, I got, I was like, I got to clock in. I clocked in and like, as the episode started, you know, I sat there and you know, you could clock in like two minutes early. So I clocked in, I sat back and I just sat there and just watched her. I didn't say anything. I just watched her. And then literally this was the reaction, right? This is my favorite thing in the world. She goes, <laughs> I was like yeah and she was like what the hell are you doing working at this restaurant I was like I ask myself that question a lot I don't know but here I am and then after she after she found that out it spread like wildfire around the restaurant because up here there is also not a lot of you know actors that are actively pursuing the business so, you know you have the ones that are like oh, I'm an actor. And you're like, oh, what have you done? They're like, oh, you know, I was like background on this movie with like 500 people. I'm like, oh, okay. Like you're a background actor. They're like, no, like I'm an actual actor. I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. Like, you know, no disgrace towards that because I've done background acting before. But 
you know, there's different levels of, there's ones that actually do stuff. Yeah, extra, featured extra, dead cast, stunts. Yeah, extra, featured extra, ones that do things, but they're not like, I don't want to say not good, but they're not like as good as they can be type of projects, you know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, I've been an extra, extra equals human prop. Uh, if you get to talk, that's, that's amazing. Um, but gener generally, if, you don't, if you're not one that doesn't talk, you're a human prop. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So and they give uh, you free food. No, don't complain. <laughs> that is true. And that is always, always a nice feat because that's one of my favorite parts about it is like, it's Same. crafty. You know, like, you, yeah, you work on Some set. Some of the food is unreal. Yeah, it's it's always something insane. You know, one day you're like, oh, we got like a, you know, you show up at 5 a.m. and you're like, oh, my God, this is like the devil's hour. This, I'm yeah, so yeah. exhausted. So exhausted. You know, I wake up at 3 a.m. when normally that's when I'm like going to bed, <laughs> you know, and and uh, waking up at 3 and then, you know, you're driving there and you're falling asleep and you're like, you know, we got a bomb breakfast burrito truck here with like fresh made Colombian coffee. And I'm like... You son of a bitch. I mean, no, not even kidding. I, I did this Tuesday, Thursday. No, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Yeah, and they're exactly. And they, they'll be like, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it's Man. this. And Friday. They had these breakfast pots. And they were so fucking good. For what? Say that again? They had like breakfast pots. So it was like, like a little pot. Like you get like, your, you get like a rice dish out of. And oh. what they had was like, like an English breakfast or an Irish breakfast kind of in there. And oh my god, <laughs> it was yeah, yeah. It, You'd be sneaking away trying to get a second one. I don't know what it is. It's it's like you can have the most simplistic food on set. Like it could be burgers and fries, but whenever it's like made on set, it's like twelve times better than you would yes. get it at a restaurant. Which is super weird. I don't know why. Because typically, like a lot of the times, I see them come from food trucks. And I mean, we know mm. that food trucks are great. But I'm like, damn, you guys found like top tier food trucks like and you know on Grey's Anatomy they always they always had good food I mean it, basically every set I've been on they've always had good food you know I've had some where they're like hey go get like Subway and we'll like pay you back I'm like okay like I, I'm cool with that or you know they'll order like bulk of like in and out for people or, or like whatever it is but most of the time it's like really good food and obviously when you get on the bigger sets that's when they're like hey lunch is gonna be uh you know seafood we're gonna have like oysters and like lobster tails and you're like well, damn. God damn. like what for marvel dinner, food trucks are like, like yeah we're gonna have like wagyu steak and like lobster tails and i'm like, <laughs> I'm like am i supposed to be here for <laughs> yeah you, you're gonna feed me that are you sure like i was like i feel i feel bad but i mean okay <laughs> i'll take it you and know? have you ever been on set and they've made you pay for the food? Like, not even that they pay you back, but you just have to go out and buy from their uh, stuff. Once or twice. Once or twice. It, it's very, very rare. It's typically on smaller, like, mostly short films. I want to say that on short films I have, but never as an actor. Because um, yeah. I've done a lot of short films and TV shows and web series and stuff behind the camera you know i've done sound work um i've done grip work um so i've, I've kind of dabbled in that stuff and i did this reality web series that was like it, the concept of it was really really funny it was kind of like uh like a reality dating thing where they basically took some random girl you know she sent in a tape along with a like however many other girls you know saying like oh you know i want to find love because of that you know you know how that crap goes. Yeah. And, and they basically hired this guy who was um he, he was a hired actor and you know she was supposed to meet this guy and they were supposed to go to different places and we were like filming it i was doing the sound for it and this guy is supposed to act like a total tool the whole time and like flip out over everything. Like they went to dinner and like they purposely brought out the wrong order to him. And he's like, what is this? Like, this is bullshit. And he would like take the plate and throw it on the ground. And the girl's like, 
like you know freaking and it was so funny because like all of us knew that it was fake and she was the only one that didn't so me oh. and my yeah but that that was that was one of the i mean i'm getting off topic there but that was one of the projects where it was like it was lunchtime and then they were like all right so what do you guys want to do for lunch and we're like i don't know what are our options and like i don't know like we're going over here you guys can go you know and buy your your food wherever and then I was like, I didn't want to be that guy that like asked like, oh, are you going to pay us back? Because, you know, that's typically what they do for the actors. So I wasn't expecting it. But then my buddy chimed in and was like, cool. So like, should we get our receipts so you can reimburse us? And like, oh, yeah, like we we don't have that kind of budget. So if you guys like don't mind paying for it, that'd be great. No, that, 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 that's the slide. It, uh, it during is. the thing saying if you guys don't mind well if you cared if it minded or not you would have said it beforehand exactly like you would have at least gave us the decency to tell us prior but they did it and which is, i mean you know what are you gonna do but what if you uh, like didn't bring any money or lunch you'd just be hungry exactly like exactly. that's not cool yeah, yeah, yeah i'm like what am i gonna do freaking starve i mean yeah because we it was such a small production be, that we didn't even really have a crafty table so it wasn't like we had it set up for snacks because we were moving locations after every shot. We had like 12 different locations because, you know, they were supposed to be progressing through this date, starting at one place, ultimately ending at another, which is when like they tell us or tell the girl like, hey, this is all fake. And, you know, it, which was a total dick move because it was like this girl came on this show like hoping to find love. And then they're like, ha, ah, like we pranked you. You just had a terrible day. And she's like, wow thanks that's awesome like <laughs> you know yeah and like that could have went two ways that. it could have went two ways yeah exactly um but me and you know and my buddy ended up getting food but like and we had to pay for it which sucked because we had to drive with with our with um my other friend who actually got us the the job in the first place we had to drive like an hour and a half to get where we were filming on our own dime, like on our own gas mileage, on our own cars, like they didn't provide transpo, they didn't provide gas money, like none of that. And we were like, so basically you're gonna make us drive three hours, like 250 miles round trip, because why? <laughs> and you're not gonna pay us for it? Like this, this sucks. And then at the end of the day, there we ended at this like fancy restaurant slash winery type of thing. And they're like, all right, that's a wrap. You know, well, the restaurant doesn't open for another 45 minutes. Like, so everybody, like, if you want a drink, um, we're going to, you can each get one drink on our tab. And I'm like, dude, I would have rather you have paid for my gas or my food, bro. But yeah, I'll take a drink after the crap that you put me through. <laughs> It, yeah, it was, it was that that was a disaster of a project. But, Hopefully, you uh, got some really expensive drink that set them back like a couple oh, hundred oh, dollars. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, we were like rummaging through it, and the guy like gave him the credit card, and my buddy and I, you know, my buddy was looking at it, and he's like, "Ooh, this beer sounds good." I'm like, "Dude, that's like eight doll hairs, bro." I'm like, "Why don't you look at this? Why don't you?" look at these um these cocktails and they had like this crazy gin and tonic that was like 45 bucks why i don't know why i don't know i was like why the i was like yeah i was like this had to have been like the nectar of the gods or something like yeah. that like you know but i was like and guess what it was the nectar of the gods it was the nectar of the gods it was amazing because of course me and my buddy we only ate like that one meal like six hours beforehand and it was something really small like we got like little street tacos that was like three street tacos for like five bucks because we we're like well we already spent money driving here like you know and we got to spend money driving back so we might as well kind of try to diminish how much we spend so they were like five bucks three tacos you know probably yay big in, in length and you know, we ate those and they held us over for the meantime. But by the time we got to that point, you know, we were so hungry. Our stomachs were practically empty. So we were like, oh, yeah, like this is a recipe for a good time. Like 
$45 gin and tonic. I was like, obviously there's something about it that justifies its worth. And we got it and we probably had three, four sips and we were like, whoa. (laughs) So just between us two, like they had a $90 tab right there. And there was like other people that were ordering like beers and wines and stuff like that. And then after that, you guys are going to appreciate that we had to get a nice pint of Guinness to top it all off. We, I mean, we had to, I mean, me and my buddy, we love, (laughs) we love Guinness. We love it. It's good. It it actually is good for anyone. It is. It is good. A lot of people I know are hesitant because they're like, oh, that's weird. It's like a dark beer. And I'm like, no, no. It has no fizz in it. I don't want it. First of all, it is a stout. Let's get that straight right now. It is not an ale. It is not. It is a stout. That's like, you know, we got to get that out of the way. And, uh, you know, I've opened a lot of people to it because I went to to Vegas. I kind of expect you to say Ireland, but okay. (laughs) Okay. No, I really, I really want to go to Ireland, but um, I no, I went to Vegas two, three years ago and they actually have a full on Guinness store in there. And, you know, they have, you you can buy, buy it in cans and bottles and all different, you know, versions of it. I can't remember off the top of my head what the other versions were, but, um, and, you know, they had shirts and merchandise memorabilia, but they also had like a little, I guess, class slash seminar that you, you paid like. 50 bucks for I don't even actually I I don't even remember how much it was but basically you got you got a a certified Guinness glass which I think I I still have inside and they taught you how to pour the perfect pint of Guinness you know (laughs) oh oh my god at the degree angle and then like when you get to the top you know you put like a little nitro I can't remember off the top of my head what it was and then you let it sit for like two minutes and then you come back to it and then he, and it's supposed to be like at the peak of its flavor. So basically they taught me how to do it. I got to do it and they gave me a video of me doing it. And then a c- certificate that said like, Brandon Russell hereby know how to pour the perfect pint of Guinness. <laughs> I would love pick- to carry that around going for an interview in a pub. Like, yeah, it'd be like, I, they're like can I get a Guinness? And they go to do it. I'm like, no, 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 no. Let, let me take Hold over. On now. Because you're not doing it right. Because I've done that before. <laughs> I put it on my CV. Yeah. <laughs> Trust me. I'm on TV. I know, man. Now, ever since um, ever since they taught me that, um, every time I've gone into, you know, a pub or a brewery of any, ta- uh, of any type, you know, I've gone in and, you know, when I, I, you know, I always ask them, I go, do you guys have Guinness? Like, we have it in a bottle. I'm like, mm-hmm. I have a draft and they're like, no, or I uh, mean, my, my same buddy that, that came with me that ordered that insane gin and tonic. Um, we don't really remember the rest of the day after that, but <laughs> <laughs> we went to, uh, we go to Comic-Con in San Diego. Yeah, um, that's cool. That's cool. There every year for the last four or five years, obviously we didn't get, get to go this year because of COVID, which sucks. We were really looking forward to it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, but um we every time we're, you know we're there we go to comic-con and then at night we hit the streets you know we do a nightlife because i mean in san diego it's it's ocean it's near the ocean it's it's a gorgeous city it's super cool there they have a really cool night nightlife you know they have a lot of good restaurants bars clubs but during comic-con they're busy every night of the week so we get there on wednesday we go out wednesday night thursday night friday night saturday night, sunday we typically we're going back and forth between like you know uh, red carpet events and stuff like that but you know one night we didn't have any so we got out and we went to this you know um we we went kind of pub hopping and we went to this one and they had guinness there put it on draft and the guy was just pouring it and the whole time i was like oh he's not doing it right <laughs> And I was like, dude, this, I was like, I'm telling, like, it's going to taste good, but I was like, it's not going to taste as good as it will if we go to that Irish pub across the street. And I said, you yeah. can, I was like, I'm willing to bet my life on it. And my buddy's like, I don't know if there's really a difference in the way you pour it. I was like, no, 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 no. Yes, there is. Trust me. So we, we got it from that one place and, you know, we had it, it was good, but I was like, no, oh, man, I was like, this isn't like, this isn't it. Like, this isn't it and i'm like let's go across the street we went across the street big irish pub like it was so cool inside we went in yeah. 
I didn't even have to ask if they had Guinness on draft because I mean, if they, if they if it's an Irish pub and they don't have it, they're not an Irish pub. That's just that's, that's just a fact. fact. That's it's just a fact, fact of life. It's a fact of life. So you know, we went in and I said, you know, two pints of Guinness. I said, you know, watch how watch how this guy pours it. Lo and behold, he did it perfect way. And then put it there and was like, if I were you, and I was like, you'd let it sit for a little bit. And, and he was like, yeah. And I, I can't remember the exact second, but it's like, it, it's some time frame between like 60 and 90 seconds, if, if I remember correctly, where you just have to let it sit and kind of wait. And, and then, you know, the whole time me and my buddy were just staring at it like, can we drink it yet? Can we drink it yet? You know, we were counting down. And we're like, all right, cool. And then we tasted it and he's like, Oh yeah, I, I see the difference now, and I was like, "Exactly." Here you go. The magic has happened. <laughs> yeah, now, so now, speaking now, of the magic that's happened, uh, we're gonna have to end this podcast. Uh, do you want to finish your story, and then we'll uh, give you like we'll tell people where to find you, and we'll end there. No, I mean I talk a lot, so if you guys had any other questions, man, you're answer. on a podcast. Thank God you talk a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> um, I mean, if you have any other questions, I'll uh, um, you know, I'll answer. Other than that, yeah, no, my my Irish story is about over. I'm, I'll end with the standard question. <laughs> no, it's not a standard question. Um, do you have any Irish ancestry? Uh, I do actually. Yeah, so I took one of those uh, like ancestor, like the DNA <clears throat> things, and. You know, I got it back. It was primarily um, English, like, you know, Britain oh, and stuff. Irish. But we had English, Irish, Czechoslovakian, um, a little bit of, <clears throat> like, Australian, New Zealand area. And That's cool. And the, the biggest one that was surprising to me was, like, it, it it said in the DNA thing Western Africa and I was like okay like I could understand maybe South Africa but I was like Western Africa I'm like I don't even know like what is considered Western Africa so I like clicked it and it like it kind of gave me more details and it was like Middle Eastern, it was it was like Pakistan, Iran. I was like, oh, you're talking like Northwest, at like, yeah, no, you're talking about a completely different. So I, I found out that it was like, it was, it wasn't even three percent. It was like point three percent West African. That was like Pakistan, Iran, mm -hmm. like stuff mm -hmm. like that. And I was like, interesting, okay. like Moroccan and and you know and stuff like that. So I found it very interesting. But the 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 three top ones were English, um, Irish, and Italian, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, most people, have, for know. some reason, there's this big thing in the States where you're like half Irish and half Italian. Like, do we just all love each other, us and the Italians? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I've, been, I've been asking myself that. I'm like, uh, is this right? Mm. Like, how can I, I mean, What's okay. What's your story? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to know that. I would love to know the uh, story behind that one. So, if people want to find you, they want to follow you, they want to check you out, where can they find you? Uh, you can find me Facebook, uh, Brandon Tyler Russell. Uh, Instagram is Brandon the Russell. And Twitter is Illinois Actor. Those Any are YouTube yet? I don't have my own YouTube channel. I should start one. I've been thinking about it for like 10 years. Well, <laughs> so I think it's about, yeah, I think it's about time that I make up my mind on that one. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So if you want to yeah. find them, you know where to find them. Mm. Uh, again, thank you so much for getting on. Uh, Thanks for having it was, me. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Yeah, and uh, to everyone who watched, uh, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed and just have a great day.